Hello again, fight fans. Micah Montero for Boxing Monthly Magazine and BoxingMonthly.com. Rounding out what has been a great year in the sport of boxing in 2017. These are Montero Unboxing's year-end awards. We have a bunch of different categories for you guys, a bunch of different videos to keep you entertained as we round out 2017 and ring in 2018. Let's talk about the upset of the year in 2017. Now, there were several different candidates that we could talk about. There were several, several upsets. But let's start with Sri Saket Sor Rungvi Sai winning a majority decision over Roman Gonzalez back on March 18th. Now, obviously, this was a big upset. Chocolatito was rated number one pound for pound by many media pundits, myself included, and by many, many fans. We felt he had had some close calls since moving up to 115 pounds, but he had won those fights, and we saw him as the pound for pound number one guy. And in March, on the co made of the Golovkin Jacobs card, Rugby Side scores that majority decision win and really, really shocked the world. He dropped Chocolatito early in that fight. And then they had a fight of the year candidate. It was one of the best fights of 2017. A lot of people forget about that. And there were several, you could make an argument, several of those rounds were among the best rounds in 2017. So really, really great fight. A breakthrough performance. It put him on the map and he gets the win. Obviously an upset. However, many people, myself included, thought that Chocolatito won that fight and deserved the decision. Close, but we thought that Gonzalez won. On top of that, Gonzalez just hasn't been the same guy at 115 pounds. His peak was at 108, 112. That was his physical prime. Those of you who didn't see Chocolatito until he moved up in weight, go back and watch him at 108 pounds. His first couple fights at 112, you see a different guy. Clearly, Chocolatito was past his best. And it was proven in the rematch on the Superfly card when Rungvi Sai scored a highlight reel knockout, one of the top knockouts of the year, really figuratively and literally ending Chocolatito's career. He announced he'd be done with boxing after that fight. He has since announced he's going to fight on, which I think is a disappointment. But obviously, Rungvi Sai, with that majority decision win over Chocolatito early this year, that is a candidate. But there's a little bit of uh, asterisk there because of the things I talked about. Saddam Ali, unanimous decision over Miguel Cotto on December 2nd. Now again, massive, massive upset. When this fight was first signed, a lot of people were upset. A lot of you guys out there were saying you're not even going to watch it. Cotto's being, Cotto's being a diva. Uh, why is this on HBO, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? We know now uh, that Cotto and Golden Boy reached out to a bunch of different opponents, and they all turned it down for one reason or another. Ali takes the fight. Moves up in weight. This is a guy that was beat by Jesse Vargas last year, was KO'd, and that was at 47. Now he's moving up to 54 and fighting a guy with so much more experience than him. Scores the upset win. But again, there's some asterisks here because Cotto tore his left bicep, I think in the fifth round, and that's just when his left hook to the body was changing the fight for him. And I feel he was coming on and on his way to possibly maybe stopping Ali, but certainly going on to win the fight, I felt. That's what I was seeing. Tears that bicep, changes the look out of the fight. Ali, for his part though, hangs tough. I thought his trainer, Andre Rozier, did an outstanding job working with him in between rounds and goes on to win the fight. But because of the age difference, because of the injury, there's some asterisks there. Jeff Horn, unanimous decision win over Manny Pacquiao, July 2nd in Brisbane, Australia. On the first top rank on ESPN, a card of that new deal that Bob, Bob Arum and, and ESPN put together, right? So uh, massive, massive upset. Many people thought this was going to be an absolute slaughter. Horn, to his credit, had earned a mandatory position for Pacquiao's WBO welterweight title. So he earned the fight. He earned the shot. But we didn't think this was going to be competitive. Some people did. But the overwhelming majority thought this was going to be a slaughter. Horn goes on to not only survive... And it looked like there was one of the rounds later in that fight. I can't remember if it was the eighth round or something like that, where he was out on his feet. But cuts Manny up, roughs him up, shows him no respect, goes out there and gets nasty and dirty with him, fouls the hell out of him, comes out with the victory. Massive, massive upset. Big, big deal. However, big asterisks on this one. Most people, myself included, thought Pacquiao won the fight. Most people thought that several points could have been taken for some of Horn's tactics. 
Uh, there are some refs out there that would have stopped that fight during that one dominant 10-8 level round. I can't remember off the top of my head. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I want to say it was the 8th or ninth round where Pacquiao was just beating the hell out of the guy. Pillar to post. Just, you know, just all over the place. And a lot of refs would have stopped the fight at that point. So there were a lot of things going on there. A lot of asterisks. And then, of course, the age difference. Pacquiao hasn't been the same guy. He's really been well past his best for four or five years now. So big asterisks, can't call this quite the upset of the year when most people don't even feel he won the fight. For me, hands down, upset of the year 2017, Caleb Truax, majority decision over James DeGale on December 9th. And this should have been a unanimous decision. One of those judges who had this, I think, a draw, it was an absolutely atrocious card. The UK judge who ended up I think retiring after this, which is good because he shouldn't be scoring or refing any more fights. But Truex always been a, a B-level guy. That's not to put him down. That's just, that's just the truth. Anytime he's stepped up in class, he's lost. You go back to last year, April of 2016, he was TKO'd in the first round by Anthony Durrell. You go back to the previous April in 2015, Daniel Jacobs stopped him in the 12th round. So, no high-level wins for him in years. Comes into this fight as a massive betting underdog against James DeGale, who had sat on his butt all year, but his fight in January against Badu Jack was one of the best fights of 2017. Um, I, in my opinion, I think Badu Jack won that fight, seven rounds to five. But DeGale finished uh, on his feet. Uh, he had dropped Jack. He had... Suffered, I think, a tooth got knocked out. He had been busted up, but he showed some real, real heart. And because it was a draw, he retained his title. So he was a titleist going into this fight. It's not as if he's an old guy or anything like that. In his physical prime, most people thought, I thought he'd probably go the distance, but I thought he'd outbox Truax and win a clear, comfortable decision. Some early, uh, early round ring rust, but then come through and win. Eight rounds to four, or nine rounds to three. I think that's what most people thought. He was decisively defeated. From the first to the 12th round, Truax just was the better fighter. It was such a surprising performance. Runaway for upset of the year, and one of the biggest upsets, really, just in terms of betting odds, that we've seen in a long, long time in a fight where clearly the upset fighter won. We've seen bigger upsets where the scores were controversial, but I'm talking where it was a unanimous decision. Unanimously, everybody thinks Truax beat DeGale. I can't think of a bigger upset like this in terms of betting odds in recent years. Huge performance from Truax, who's turned into a good follow on Twitter. Follow him because he, he's been tweeting some fun stuff after that win. And he sets him up for some big stuff in 2018. He's got options now, right? So let me know what you guys think. Do you agree? Disagree? Let's get the argument started. Comment below, like, share, subscribe. Have a happy holidays, a happy, safe New Year's. I'll see you at the fights in 2018.